All right, YouTube, today I'm gonna to show you how to solve for the equivalent resistance of this bridge circuit, which looks an awful lot like some of the Wheatstone bridge circuits which we've tackled in the past. The catch is, and the important difference here, is that this bridge circuit has a resistor acting as the bridge from one side of the circuit to the other. Now, in order to understand why we can't just tackle this circuit the same way we have in the past using simple series and parallel combinations, I wanna take and actually redraw this circuit in a way that's gonna be a little bit clearer. So you imagine starting at this port right here, we took this circuit and stretched it out along this pathway that goes through the one, three, and five ohm resistor. So they were all in a line. You'll notice this two ohm resistor effectively bypasses the one and the three. And the four ohm resistor is bypassing the three and the five ohm resistor. And so looking at this circuit in this way, I think it becomes a little bit more clear why we can't tackle this just looking at resistors in series and parallel. I mean, sure, it looks like these two resistors are in parallel with one another, but then this three ohm resistor starts to interfere. And you can't say these two resistors are in series exclusively with one another because of this four ohm resistor. You know, any one of these resistors, if you take them away, this gets pretty easy. But because we have this fifth resistor, we're gonna have to tackle this problem using a little bit more complicated method. And that leads us up to two concepts in circuits. The first being the junction rule, and the other being the loop rule. Now the junction rule tells us that at any intersection of wires, the total current running into that junction or intersection has to equal the total current out of that junction. So let's take a look at each of these four junctions which exist in our original circuit. So labeling each of these four junctions, A, B, C, and D. Starting at this first junction, we know there's gonna be some current coming out of the battery. Now remember, we're trying to solve for the equivalent resistance, which means that current coming out of the battery, that's currently <laughs> an unknown. I'll just call that I, battery. So that current is coming into junction A here. So we're gonna set that current from the battery equal to the current running out of this junction. Now there's two ways the current can travel. The first being through this one ohm resistor, I'll call that current I1 since it's passing through the one ohm resistor. Or the current can pass through this two ohm resistor. I'll call that I2. So I1 plus I2, that is the current out of this junction, needs to equal the current in, I battery. And while we don't know any of these values, what we're doing is generating a system of equations that's gonna allow us to solve for the equivalent resistance of this circuit. Now looking at junction B, we know there's some current coming into junction B through this one ohm resistor. But the question comes up, is current coming into or out of B from this three ohm resistor? And the reality there is, well, it depends. I say it depends and that is because it depends on the value of these resistors. And so ultimately all we can do at this point is simply guess. And if we guess wrong, that's okay. We'll simply get a negative value for our current in our result somewhere way over here a while from now. Now I'm gonna go through and guess that the current through this three ohm resistor is to the right. I'm gonna call that I3. And if that current is to the right, that means the current would be coming out of junction B. So I'll have the current from this one ohm resistor going in, current from or through this three ohm resistor going out, and the current through the four ohm resistor also moving out or away from junction B. So I1 is going to equal the current out, that's I3, plus I4. Now looking over here at junction C, we're gonna have this current I2 running into junction C. And we have to be a little bit careful here. Because this current, or we decided the current through this three ohm resistor was running from B to C, that means I3 would be running into junction three. So that's gonna be I2 plus I3 running into junction C, and then our current through the five ohm resistor, we'll call that I5 running out. I forgot to label that I4. And last we have junction D. At junction D we have I4 and I5 running in, and those are gonna be equal to the current which is going back into the battery, which again we're gonna call I battery. Now we have a system of equations here, but if you count up our unknowns, we don't know the current through the battery or the current through any of our five ohm resistors. That means we have six unknowns and only four equations. And basic algebra tells us that that isn't gonna work.
So we need to turn to something called the loop rule. Now the loop rule tells us that the total change in voltage or potential around any loop in a circuit must add up to zero. And in practice, what that means is if we start at some point in a loop and follow the path of the current, no matter what path we follow, we should add up to a total change in voltage of zero. Now, where you choose to start this loop is absolutely arbitrary. There's no wrong place to start. So I'm going to start our first loop looking right here just before the battery. Now, where people tend to get the most confused in this problem is choosing what loops to look around. Now, we're going to look at three different loops here, and ultimately what we want to do is have all five of our resistors show up in at least one of those loops. So our first loop is going to go starting at this point through the battery to junction A, then around the left side of this circuit. Now, we can generate an equation from this starting at this point. We know the total change in voltage around the loop is going to be zero. So that's going to be equal to the 9 volts increase in potential we get in going across the battery. So we're going to show that as positive 9. Moving our way over to junction A, there's no change in potential. But as we move down through this 1 ohm resistor, we know there's going to be some loss in potential. The catch is we're not totally sure how much that is. But we can turn to Ohm's law to work out exactly how much potential is going to be lost here. See, we know we have a 1 ohm resistor with some unknown current, I1, passing through it. So as the charge passes through this 1 ohm resistor, there's going to be a loss of potential, so it's negative, And that is, remember, a potential, which is equal to IR. So that's going to be I1 multiplied by 1. Then moving from B to D, we're going to have a similar situation. The potential lost across this 4 ohm resistor is going to be I4 times 4. This is nothing other than our unknown current multiplied by our resistance. And still, we don't know I1 and I4, but we've generated a fifth equation in order to solve our system of equations. Now remember, we need to tie together all five of our unknown currents using equations. So next we're going to look around the outside of this loop, starting here, going up through the battery to junction A, then around the right-hand side to junction D and back. And again, applying the loop rule, we're going to have 0 equals, starting right here, plus 9 volts. Wrapping around, we get to junction A and go right this time through this 2 ohm resistor. So there's going to be a loss of some potential. That's I2 times 2. And going from C to D, there's going to be a change in potential of IR, that's I5, multiplied by 5, the value of the resistor. Now at this point, we've used the loop rule to address both the left and right sides of this bridge circuit, but we haven't applied the loop rule anywhere to this 3 ohm resistor, and it's this resistor sitting right here in the middle that's creating all the problems in us trying to reduce down this circuit. Now the reality is we could generate some loop that starts right here and uses the battery and passes through all these resistors, but the trick in this whole problem is I want to look at a loop that looks just at these three resistors right here. You see, when you're using the loop rule, you don't have to start and finish the loop rule at the same point for all of your loops. So in this case, we're going to generate an equation that looks at just the voltage across each of these three resistors right here. It doesn't involve the battery or these 4 and 5 ohm resistors. Now where we choose to start this loop is completely arbitrary. It's not going to change anything in the end. I'm going to choose to start it right up here at junction A. See, so starting at junction A, working our way down through this 1 ohm resistor, we're going to have a loss of potential as I1 times 1. Moving from left to right, or from B to C, there's going to be a loss of potential across our 3 ohm resistor of I3 times 3. And last, we're going to go from C to A. And this is where we have to be a little bit careful in using this loop. And I'll show you why. 
See, if current moves from A to C and loses potential, then in moving from C to A, there's going to be an increase in potential. Now, yes, current isn't actually going to go from C to A, but we're, we're just walking our way around this loop. Imagine we're walking downhill this way and this way. We'd have to walk back uphill to get back to our starting point here. Ultimately, what that means is we're going to be adding back in the voltage that would be lost if a charge was to go from A to C because we're going in the opposite direction. So it's going to be plus I2 times 2. Now, folks, at this point, the physics of the problem is done. We've used the junction rule and loop rule to generate a system of equations. So now I'm going to go through and show you how to take these seven equations and six unknowns and turn around and solve for the equivalent resistance of this original circuit. Now, if we're talking algebra, the first thing you might notice in all this is that we have six unknowns, but seven equations. So the question comes up, why do we even look at this third loop? But the reality is we had to have loops that pass through all of our different resistors. So these three loops were necessary. Looking over here at the junction rule, we could toss one of these equations. Uh, and the easiest thing to do is to get rid of this equation right here, which looked at the current from these two resistors coming into joint D. Now, ultimately, we're just going to reduce down this system of equations unknown by unknown, and we're going to fit them all into one equation. And it's actually this last equation which we generated that's going to tie everything together for us. So that's actually where I want to start our algebra over here. So rewriting this, I'm going to rearrange the I2 and I3 just for my own sake. We get this equation. And ultimately, we're going to try to reduce down all of our unknowns so that they'll fit into this equation right here. Now, if we're trying to fit everything in terms of I1, 2, and 3, that ultimately means the first thing we're going to look at is getting rid of I4 and I5. Now, I5 is actually pretty easy. We already have an equation that relates I2 and I3 to I5 right here. And I4 is pretty easy to come up with if we simply move this I3 over the other side of the equals sign. we now have an equation for I4. So I'm going to take this function and substitute it in here. Substituting I1 minus I3 for I4. And be careful with the double negative on that. But cleaning this up, we'll get this equation, which we'll come back to in a second. Now we can also substitute this equation in right here for I5. And again, be careful with the distribution of this negative right here. But this is going to reduce down to this equation. And it's pretty easy to get these confused. So I'm just going to separate these out so it's clear what we're talking about here. This was our green equation. This one was blue. And this was the red. So now we're just down to a system of equations with three unknowns. That's I1, 2, and 3, and ultimately three equations. So what I'm going to do now is take this equation and rearrange it for I3. And this equation I'm going to rearrange for I2. And what we're going to do is take and substitute these two equations back up here into our original equation to try to solve for I1. That is the current through this 1 ohm resistor. Now you'll notice this I2 term doesn't contain an I1 in it, but it does have an I3. So what I'm going to do is first substitute that in here. And I'm going to distribute this. And then I'll distribute this 2 into this term. by making that 21 sevenths, or 21 I3 sevenths. Now combining these two terms, we get this function. So now we're going to go back up here to this expression for I3 and substitute it in right there. Now distributing this in, we can get a common denominator out of this. 
which is going to allow us to solve for i1. And that leaves us with the current, which is passing through this 1 ohm resistor, is 1.92 amps. Now remember, we're trying to solve for the equivalent resistance of this circuit. And this obviously is not the equivalent resistance, it's a current. But what this is going to allow us to do is solve for the current out of the battery, thus getting the equivalent resistance pretty easily after that. Now because we know I1 and we need the current out of the battery to get the equivalent resistance, it's tempting to try to just go straight at I2. And we've got a nice neat equation for I2 over here, but realize it's not dependent on I1, it's dependent on I3. So we're going to have to look first at our rearrangement for I3, which is based on I1. So subbing this value in right here for our equation in I3, we find there's a current of 0.1475 amps. And you take sig figs as far as you feel like it with this. Uh, I'm just going to leave it right there because that's what the calculator kicked out. Now, you remember earlier we had said that this direction to the right, that is current from B to C, is positive, and we're getting a positive value here. If this had come up a negative value, that simply would have meant that current was passing to the left. So if you're working a problem like this with different numbers, you very well may get a negative value right here for I3. Regardless, plugging in our result for I3 into our rearrangement for I2 now, we get I2 is 1.18 amps. So knowing both I2 and I1, we can now solve for the current coming out of the battery. We find the current coming out of the battery is 3.1 amps. So now that we know both the voltage of the battery as well as the current coming out of the battery, we can apply Ohm's law to the entire circuit. And by doing that, we'll be able to solve for the equivalent resistance of the entire circuit. So we've got a 9-volt battery. That's going to be equal to 3.1 times the equivalent resistance. And there it is, the equivalent resistance of this 5-resistor bridge circuit. So I hope you found both this physics and algebra useful. And on that note... That's all for now.